Hello, global thinkers. Welcome back to Think Bricks channel, your compass to a multiple world. The escalating crisis in Israel Palestine has captured the world's attention, and the stakes could not be higher. But what makes this movement so critical? It's the seismic power shift happening within the BRICS alliance. As you likely know, six new influential countries will soon join the alliance. Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. The addition of four oil-rich Middle Eastern nations brings new complexity to an already tangled web. Let's connect the dots on how this could turn dangerous. Envision a Middle East conflict involving Iran. This could ensnare the BRICS bloc, aligning Israel's goal of neutralizing a regional rival with the United States' desire to limit BRICS' sway in the Gulf. Like dominoes falling, such an alignment makes a peaceful resolution between Israel and Hamas even more elusive. More lives were lost, an ever-worsening humanitarian disaster. The world is at the crossroads, divided again. Stay with us as we examine the latest Palestine crisis through the lens of BRICS interests and what is at stake for them. If you want to stay updated on all things about BRICS, don't forget to follow us on social media. You will find all the links you need in the description below. In a world where geopolitical tensions are soaring, the role of BRICS has never been more vital, especially regarding Israel-Palestine. Initially an economic partnership, BRICS is evolving into a political counterweight to Western dominance. This gives their collective voice on the Middle East crisis relevance and potentially transformative power. So what is the real story? Are the BRICS divided? Are the Israeli-Palestinian issue, or is there more to it than meets the eye? Our initial analysis on the Think Bricks blog hinted at a division, but a closer look paints a more complex picture. Let's start with the Bricks foreign ministers meeting in South Africa last June, before the addition of new members. The original Bricks nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa unified their stance in a joint document advocating United Nations resolutions, especially number 2334, which endorses a two-state solution. The meeting passed a resolution that was also included in the final document released at the BRICS summit in August, sending a robust message urging an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. South Africa's role as 2023 BRICS president proved crucial given its steadfast Palestine support, a stance with roots tracing back to Nelson Mandela. Remember Nelson Mandela? His words, Our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians, still resonate in the corridors of South African power and among ordinary people. But pledging our solidarity with the Palestinians because they have a just struggle and their human rights are being violated as well as their quest for self-determination is something that we have always supported. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? How can the struggles for justice across continents be so interconnected? However, the expanded BRICS alliance faces internal challenges. New members introduce many domestic political factors, strategic ties and economic considerations. Russia, India and China vocally support the Palestinian state. Meanwhile, Brazil stays neutral as a United Nations Security Council chair. And pro-Israel Argentina adds complexity. Russia's concerns over escalation reaffirms its commitment to diplomacy over military action a view mirrored by China and India, who stress negotiations and international law. 
Public statements by individual BRICS countries have expressed solidarity with the Israeli nation, particularly regarding attacks on civilians. But these messages have been misconstrued as total support for the government of Israel. Large-scale Israeli attacks on the population of the Gaza Strip, which have claimed many lives, have further muddied the waters. This violence has fueled a surge of devastating clashes with a heartbreaking humanitarian impact in Gaza. In this intricate landscape, the role of the United States has been controversial. Its recent opposition to Russian-led United Nations resolution for a ceasefire in Gaza has expanded the cracks between the major powers. This, together with disinformation campaigns aimed at Russia and India, creates additional obstacles to peace efforts. The situation prompts questions about whether influential nations can get their interests aligned for peace, especially in light of new geopolitical orientations such as the India-Middle East-Europe Economic Corridor. The United States has long been a key player in the Middle East, leveraging strategic initiatives to gain influence. One such initiative is the recent IMEC proposal formalized as the G20 in India, involving Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, India and Israel. This project aims to transform regional infrastructure such as railways and pipelines. While reinforcing US-Israeli ties, it also casts doubt on US impartiality in Israeli-Palestinian affairs. Can you really be a referee when you are also a player? In addition, skepticism has greeted the U.S. position on uh, the recent conflict between Israel and Hamas, Saudi Arabia's termination of normalization talks with Israel after Israel's harsh reaction against Hamas and the Palestinian territories, is seen by a section of the American public as a victory for Iran, which has always supported Hamas's claims. In this theory, there would also be Chinese and Russian support aimed at obstructing IMEC. However, the U.S. State Department has officially denied Iranian involvement in Hamas's attacks, further confusing the outlook. The U.S. refusal to back a Russian-led United Nations Gaza ceasefire resolution has not just polarized global opinion, but also caused uncertainty of its commitment to impartiality. This dual role, facilitating regional projects while artisan and ongoing conflicts, prompts questions about long-term U.S. strategy, highlighting challenges in maintaining principled stances on human rights and international law. This intricate U.S. Middle East involvement complicates its foreign policy and sends ripples through global geopolitics, impacting diplomatic ties and initiatives on issues like Ukraine. The Israel-Palestine conflict interlinks regional powers like Saudi Arabia and Iran. Remarkably, Despite ideological and geopolitical differences, both nations united in supporting Palestine. These two nations recently mended their diplomatic relations after a seven years' break. China played the role of mediator, smoothing things out a few months before both countries got invitation to join BRICS. Coincidence? Let us know what you think with your comments. Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi even discussed ways to calm the Gaza situation. This shows their commitment to humanitarian law, but their alignment isn't selfless. Both nations know the potential consequences if Israel and its Western allies dominate, like a refugee crisis and geopolitical shifts. Iran explicitly warned through United Nations channels that it could intervene if Israel keeps operating in Gaza. This reveals how a local conflict could quickly grow into a regional one, potentially involving other Middle Eastern states or even the United States. Adding complexity is the religious roots of the conflict. The Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem is the third holiest Islamic site. It is a flashpoint that can spark broader regional unrest. The mosque remains at the heart of the divide, including disagreement over East Jerusalem's status. It symbolizes the interconnected religious, political and nationalist dimensions of the dispute. Egypt, another new BRICS member, also plays an important role as a mediator, controlling access to Gaza and providing aid. 
It supports Palestine, but also keeps diplomatic channels open with Israel. Why? Well, Egypt has its own balancing act to maintain handling concerns about security and political stability. Have you ever wondered why Russia's position on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is being distorted by the Western media? Russia supports both sides. But the West is not happy because it questions its power in the Middle East. The US and Qatari media are currently spreading disinformation by painting Russia as pro-Hamas and India as pro-Israel in order to stir the pot and divide world opinion. You know why? It is a, an old and classic strategy to divide and conquer, thereby complicating diplomatic efforts and polarizing global sentiment. China also plays a complex role. It remains neutral, but it has major economic interests in the region, including the Belt and Road Initiative. Any instability in the Middle East could undermine China's long-term economic plans. China recently met with Russia to speak jointly against conflict escalation demonstrating a coordinated effort to bring stability. And what if Iran decides to get involved? It could catalyze a broader regional or even global war, a situation Russia and China want to avoid since they support diplomatic solutions. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa and Chinese Foreign Minister Ba Yi have stressed the need for a peaceful, two-state solution based on the 1967 borders. But the US military presence could increase tensions, making the solution more difficult. The two-state concept has been central to the peace talks and in the visions an independent Palestine alongside Israel. While the BRICS and others support this concept based on pre-1967 borders, the United States has often blocked unfavorable United Nations resolutions. The Arab Peace Initiative, supported by the BRICS, offers a comprehensive plan. It calls for Israel's complete withdrawal from the territories occupied in 1967 in exchange for peace. However, worsening conditions in Palestine and the expansion of Israeli settlements are the main obstacles. Neighboring countries such as Iran and Saudi Arabia are increasingly concerned about the refugee crisis and geopolitical fallout. The urgency for two states has never been stronger, but external powers acting in different ways make this path more difficult. However, it remains the most recognized path to sustainable peace. Meanwhile, Gaza's humanitarian crisis is critical, affecting its 2.3 million inhabitants. With an economy crippled by the Israeli-Egyptian blockade, medicines are in short supply, putting a strain on healthcare. Recent violence has been devastating, claiming more than 5,000 lives and injuring thousands. A United Nations spokesman warns that evacuating 1 million Gazans is not a solution. It would worsen the crisis. Described as an open-air prison by Human Rights Watch, Gaza's situation cannot be ignored. Aid only temporarily solves deep problems, but it also causes widespread trauma, especially in children, and threatens lasting damage to Palestinian society. The Middle East remains involved in geopolitical tensions, capturing current events in critical to understanding the complexities that shape our global future. For example, President Biden's recent wartime visit to Israel balanced support for an ally with the need to address the humanitarian disaster in Gaza. Meanwhile, a horrific bombing on a Gaza hospital intensified global calls for immediate action, putting the United Nations in the spotlight. Will it rise to the occasion or be paralyzed by divergent global interests? The recent failures of Security Council votes on Russia's ceasefire proposal has highlighted the conflicting positions on achieving a lasting peace. The evolving Israeli-Palestinian crisis highlights broader geopolitical tensions, with global power struggling for influence. This swamp risks trapping emerging blocks such as the BRICS, as Middle Eastern conflicts intersect with strategic rivalries between the West and rising nations. 
How then will the bricks move forward? The block must take difficult decisions about its road. Will it pursue cautious neutrality focused on stability? Or will it aim for both positions, risking some internal tensions as the West hopes? The path it chooses could determine whether the BRICS can fulfill its promise as a counterweight to Western primacy. Most importantly, can a new spirit of partnership prevail over a radical position? Perhaps this crisis, with the global focus set, offers an opportunity to think innovatively about the alignment of interests. But it also poses traps such as proxy wars and the spiral of disorder. The old playbooks have failed. Imagination and moral courage are essential to face the unknown. Efforts for diplomatic resolution are increasingly important as the crisis could expand and involve not only Israel and Palestine, but also Iran and Lebanon. These actions will impact both immediate outcomes and future global relations. Powerful nations must prioritize the common good, while citizens around the world must demand accountability. Reconciliation requires creative diplomacy, cooperation, and the courage to consider different perspectives. Without compromise, the alternative is the prolongation of violence and suffering for future generations. We invite you to join this vital conversation, but with the depth and sensitivity it deserves. This isn't about picking sides, it's about recognizing the issues are complicated, with no monopoly on right or wrong. How about we elevate the conversation, steering clear of polarizing buzzwords and instead focus on what unites us as human beings. Your voice isn't just welcome, it's essential, especially in these turbulent times. So, what do you think? Please comment below and if you found this discussion enlightening, do us a favor, hit the like button, share the video and don't forget to subscribe. Want to stay up to date on all things BRICS related? Be sure to follow us on social media. You will find all the necessary links in the description below. Thanks for watching.